We were asked to subtract the given radical expressions. In order to add or subtract radicals, we must have like radicals. Like radicals are radicals in which the radical part is exactly the same, meaning the index is the same, and so is the radicand. However, before we identify like radicals, we must simplify each radical completely. For the first example, we have three times the square root of 12 minus the square root of 48. The first step is to simplify the square root of 12 and the square root of 48 by identifying any perfect square factors of 12 and 48. We will do this by looking at the prime factorization of both radicands. So we have three times the square root of, the prime factorization of 12 is two times two times three. Notice how this shows 12 contains the perfect square factor of two times two or two squared. So this will simplify and then we have minus the square root of 48, the prime factorization of 48 is two times two times two times two times three. Notice how this shows 48 contains the perfect square factor of two times two or two squared here, as well as here. Now if we did recognize that 48 is equal to 16 times three, we could also write 48 as four times four times three, which shows four squared is a perfect square factor of 48. Before we simplify, let's rewrite both of these using exponents. This is equal to three times the square root of two squared times three, and then we have minus the square root of two squared times two squared times three. And now we will simplify. The square root of two squared simplifies perfectly to one factor of two, because we already have a factor of three here, we multiply the three and the two, which is equal to six. This simplifies to six times the square root of three minus. The square root of two squared simplifies to a factor of two here and here, which means this simplifies to two factors of two outside the square root. Two times two is equal to four. This simplifies to four square root three. Now notice how both radical expressions contain a factor of the square root of three, which means we do have two like radicals and can perform this subtraction. Or more formally, we have two like radicals because both radicals have an index of two and a radicand of three. We determine this difference, just like we determine the difference of like terms, we treat the square root three as if it is a variable. So six square root three minus four square root three equals two square root three. And now for number two, we have two times the cube root of x to the fourth y squared minus x times the cube root of x y squared. The first step is to simplify the cube roots. So looking at the cube root of x to the fourth y to the second, we're looking for perfect cube factors of the radicand. So let's write x to the fourth as x cubed times x. So this is equal to two times the cube root of x cubed times x. Written this way, we can see here we have three equal factors of x. And of course, we still have y squared. y squared does not contain any perfect cube factors. And then we have minus x times the cube root of neither x or y squared has any perfect cube factors. So we leave this as x y squared. The next step is to simplify the cube root of x cubed, which simplifies perfectly to one factor of x. We already have a factor of two outside the cube root. So we multiply the two and the x. This is equal to two x times the cube root of x y squared. And then we have minus x times the cube root of x y squared. Notice how the radical parts are exactly the same 
and therefore these are like radicals, or more formally, these are like radicals because the index is the same, and so is the radicand. To find the difference, we first determine two x minus x, which is one x, or x, so we have x, then the radical part remains exactly the same. So we have x times the cube root of x y squared. Remember, when the index is even, and we have any variables outside the radical with an odd exponent, we do need an absolute value, which does not apply in this case. I hope you found this helpful.